It's being called the breakthrough of the century. Scientists confirmed Thursday gravitational waves exist. Albert Einstein first explained them in his general theory of relativity a century ago. Using math, he argued the waves are ripples in space and time created by two black holes colliding. So wait, why is this such a big deal? Basically, it gives us another way to observe space. So, for example, if we could study gravitational waves made from the Big Bang Theory, they could tell us more about how the universe was formed. It also confirms Einstein's theory of general relativity and shows us our understanding of the universe is correct. Earlier, I spoke with renowned theoretical physicist and CBS News science and futurist contributor Michio Kaku from Amsterdam and Duncan Brown, who is a professor of physics at Syracuse University and a member of the LIGO Scientific Collaboration, the team that made the discovery. I want to read, first of all, the NASA definition of what exactly this discovery is. It reads, gravitational waves, uh, Einstein's theory hypothesized collisions of massive objects like black holes would cause ripples. These ripples are called gravitational waves and thought to travel at the speed of light. Michi, what does that mean? Well, let's say, for example, that the sun were to disappear right now. The instant that the sun disappears, a disturbance is then created in the fabric of space and time, and it would take eight minutes eight minutes for the Earth to feel the effect that the sun has disappeared. Now here, instead of a disappearing sun, we had two black holes over a billion light years from Earth, each one weighing about 30 times the mass of our sun that collided. And the shock waves, the shock waves took over a billion years and they finally reached the planet Earth, vindicating Einstein's theory of gravity. Uh, all right, let me turn to you, Duncan. Did you want to add to that and also help us understand, first of all, how is it that researchers were able to make this discovery? It's, it's many years in the making, and uh, these gravitational waves uh, have been traveling through the universe for um, over a billion years until they passed through the Earth on, on September 14th. And these waves are ripples in the fabric of space-time itself, and LIGO is an incredibly sensitive machine that measures these tiny, tiny ripples, allows us to extract these ripples in space-time, and using those, we can do astronomy and physics and make these amazing discoveries. Okay, what do you mean extract them? I don't understand that, Duncan. Explain that to me. So I'm thinking if space is like a giant pond and something happened way over here, and it's taking time for that ripple to reach uh, the other end, which is Earth, I guess us. Um, what are you saying about what it is that scientists are now able to do based on the fact that they discovered these waves do exist? So that's a, that's a very good way of thinking about it. So if you think about ripples on the surface of a pond, imagine you can't see the pond. What you could do is you could float two corks on the surface of the pond and as the ripples go past on the surface, the corks will bob backwards and forwards. And if you can measure the distance between the corks, you can see the effect of the ripples, even though you can't see the ripples themselves. And LIGO uses lasers and very, very precision, precise measuring equipment to measure the distance between two mirrors that are a distance of two and a half miles apart. And as the gravitational waves go past, they cause these mirrors to ripple backwards and forwards a distance small, about a thousand times smaller than the diameter of a proton. And by measuring these tiny, tiny ripples, we can extract the information from the waves. The thing we're extracting really is the, is the information, the waves, the existence of these waves. And we can use the information carried in these waves to tell us about the sources that generated them billions of light years across the other side of the universe. That's amazing. Um, I, I wonder, Michio, how was Albert Einstein able to theorize this? I mean, the notion that it was a hundred years ago that Einstein came up with this theory, I think is remarkable. That's right. He himself did not believe that in his lifetime he would ever see vindication of this because gravity waves are extremely faint. In fact, they're so faint that perhaps the next generation of gravity wave detectors will be placed in outer space. And they may be so sensitive they can pick up radiation emitted from the instant of creation itself. 
Imagine that. Some people call this baby pictures of Genesis itself, because the Big Bang also shut, set off a huge shock wave, which can be measured by satellites in outer space. And remember that we have light telescopes given to us by Galileo. During World War II, we got radio telescopes that allow us to see galaxies far away. Now, this could usher in the third, the third type of telescope, that is gravity wave telescopes on the Earth and also in outer space. Wow. Um, Duncan, let me just ask you um, about how these instruments that we have, how precise are they? What do they consist of? If I'm trying to picture how it is that we, with the technology that exists in 2016, are able to detect something that isn't visible uh, to the eye, that isn't visible to devices that have come before. How is it that scientists are able to do that detection? What does that equipment look like? So that equipment is a, is a giant uh, L-shaped tube um, with an arm that goes two and a half miles in one direction and then two and a half miles in the other direction perpendicular to two it. Two and a half miles in each direction? Two and a half miles. Wow. These are huge. You can see them from space on Google Maps. Wow. And so that's how they're able to do that. All right. Last question, gentlemen. Um, I mean, what does this all mean for the future of science? Michio, I'll start with you. And, uh, you know, Duncan, I'll come to you next. It means that we're going to be opening up a new golden age, a golden age in cosmology, where we're not just looking at stars or galaxies, but looking at colliding black holes and the instant of creation itself. This is going to open up a whole new chapter in astronomy and cosmology. All the high school textbooks are going to have to be rewritten when a flood of new information comes out as this third generation of telescopes mature. Of course, it'll take many years to develop these telescopes. They're very big, they're very expensive, but we think that they'll give us a window, a window on creation itself. And Professor Brown. This is just incredible. It's a, it's a new field of astronomy. It's an entirely new way of looking at the universe. This, the discovery that we announced today is really only just the beginning. There's going to be many more amazing discoveries coming over the next years as we use gravitational waves to explore the universe in a fundamentally new way. It's like we've been deaf to the universe, just looking at it with light, and now we're hearing the sounds coming from the universe and, and experiencing the universe in an entirely new way. Wow, just amazing stuff. Duncan Brown and Michio Kaku, thank you both so much. Thank you.